Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck. Today I'm doing my February wrap up. February was kind of a weird reading month for me because I got a good amount read. I think I read seven books, which was not as much as January, but still respectable. I was happy about it. Um, but I mostly listened to audiobooks. I read one book that I loved, which if you watched my book haul, and I think I will have had my book review up by now, you'll know what it is. But after that I had kind of a book hangover and I just like didn't, nothing was like inspiring me and I just kind of wanted to like live in the world of this book. Anyways, we're just gonna go get into it. Also, this wrap up is gonna be a little bit all over the place because um, in February I read multiple books from the same series. There are at least two series that I read like multiple books from them and I so I kind of want to like lump them all together instead of ordering them by like when I read them in the month. So it's just it's just gonna be a little all over the place. Bear with me. So the first two books that I want to talk about are The Hunger Games and Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. Everybody probably knows that these are the first two books in the Hunger Games trilogy. The first one I read in physical form and the second one I of course have the book but I ended up listening to it in audiobook format which was really interesting because I've never listened to this series in audiobook. So I've been rereading these because this is one of my favorite series. I love the Hunger Games even though I don't really talk about them that much because I read them a long time ago and also I feel like everyone already knows about the Hunger Games. But um, there is a readathon going on or a read-along, not a read-a-thon, a, a read-along going on called the uh, Hunger Along, which is hosted by Rhiannon over at Crescent Moon Reads, and there are live shows at the end of each month in March. Uh, they're reading Mockingjay, so I'm going to be getting to that in March. But I started The Hunger Games in January and started kind of at the end, so I didn't quite finish it, and I finished it in February and then listened to Catching Fire. Anyways, I have really been enjoying this reread, and it's been a couple of years. I used to read this series pretty much every other year and then in the last couple of years I kind of fell out of that uh, rhythm of it. So now it's been at least three or four years since I've read this series and it's really interesting to come back to it, especially now that I have been making reviews and I read books more critically. And I still really enjoy them. I think these books aren't perfect. They do have their flaws, but there's so much about them that's done so well and also at this point there's so much nostalgia on my, my part like wrapped up into this reading experience but with these books there is there's so much that's done well it covers such like important topics the story is so poignant these books manage to make me cry every time I read them which is actually quite a feat because I am not a big uh, crier. I don't cry easily at books but I love it if a book can make me cry. Like I'm always kind of impressed if they can and this series like without fail these books make me cry every time. It was really interesting to read Catching Fire as an audiobook because as I said I have never read this series as audiobooks before and I decided to do an audiobook because I wanted to make sure that I would definitely get to this one and also because Catching Fire is my least favorite in the series. I enjoy the entire series but it has never been my favorite. Um, Mockingjay is actually my favorite book so I'm excited to get to that one. Um, but so with this one I decided I would try an audiobook just to kind of help me get through the middle one even though I do enjoy it but it's just like never entices me as much but I actually really loved it this time and I really liked the audiobook a lot so upon rereading these I gave The Hunger Games 4.5 stars and Catching Fire 4 stars and the next book that I want to talk about is The Binding this was my favorite book of the month this is probably my favorite book I've read so far this year I know we're not that far into the year but still I loved it and I had kind of a book hangover after reading this but this is a historical fiction that's kind of in an alternate history is never quite explained exactly what time period but it's sort of like 19th century England um, and in this world there are bookbinders who have the magical ability to bind people's memories into books. And so books have a very different meaning in this world that they are not really meant to be read. Books are more just vessels to hold people's memories. And the binders in this world view themselves almost like doctors, that they amputate memories from people's minds in order to alleviate their pain. Um, but bookbinding is considered very taboo. It follows our main character Emmett who is 
a farmer and his family is very against bookbinding. He doesn't even really know what it is, but he discovers that he has the ability to bind people's memories and so he be goes off to become an apprentice and learn how to use this ability. But while he is apprenticing to become a bookbinder, Emmett discovers that there is a book with his name on it, which means at some point in his life he has had a memory bound, which he of course doesn't remember what it is, but he doesn't even remember that he had this memory bound at all. So we are following him as he is kind of trying to figure out what happened and what this memory is. And this book was so good like I can't I loved the writing I was so obsessed with this book while I was reading it and I felt like I had to know what happened it's a slow paced book but still I just felt like I couldn't put it down I was obsessed with it and any person who would listen to me I was like let me tell you about this book that I have been reading it was just so good I would put a lot of content warnings on this though because since it is dealing with people's most terrible memories. We get to learn what some of those memories are and it does get darker than I was expecting it to. So I would put content warnings on it, especially for um, abuse, but especially like sexual abuse and emotional abuse, but also uh, suicide and homophobia and animal death and also other kinds of violence and mention of incest. But I have a full review of this, which should be up by now, and I will link it below. And clearly I gave this book five out of five stars. And next I want to talk about three novellas that I listened to in audiobook, which are the last three books, books four, five, and six of the Penric and Desdemona series. Book four was Mira's Last Dance, book five was Penric's Fox, and book six was The Prisoner of Limnos. And so this is a fantasy series that I have been listening to on audiobook by Lois McMaster Bujold, and this follows Penric, who has a demon living inside of him. In this world, the way sorcerers get their magic is they have a chaos demon residing in their body. And usually people view that demon as something that needs to be controlled because it's demon. But Penric has made friends with his demon and named it Desdemona, and they're kind of, you know, they're buddies. And so this is following their adventures. Um, and Penric is quite a funny character in that He's very, very unassuming. He's very mild-mannered, but he's extremely powerful. Desdemona, his demon, is an extremely old and powerful demon. So in this world, demons and sorcerers serve the order of the gods, and Penric is a learned divine, and he is rather bookish, and he just kind of wants to like stay home and putter around and read his books and do his research. And he's, as I said, he's very like humble and unassuming and mild-mannered. He just wants to blend into the background, but he kind of ends up in all of these situations where he has to um, solve a mystery or sm smuggle war criminals out of the country and all of these kind of things. But he always does it in these roundabout ways um, because he has this incredibly powerful cha chaos demon inside him and he could just like smite people if he wanted to. Uh, but he always kind of like finds his little like unassuming ways around things. And I've really been enjoying these books just because Penric, I feel like, is such an unusual protagonist. So I gave Mira's Last Dance 3.5 out of 5 stars, uh, Penric's Fox 3 out of 5 stars, and The Prisoner of Limnos 4 out of 5 stars. And the last book that I have to talk about is The Road Back to You by Ian Morgan Crone and Suzanne Stable. And this is actually just the dust jacket because I've lent this to my mom recently. But this is a book about the Enneagram, which is a personality assessment, which I believe is primarily used for spiritual development, unlike a lot of other personality assessments. Um, and I mentioned this in my book haul that the reason I got this is because uh, personality is actually a topic that I am very passionate about and I studied in school and I actually have some professional training in different personality assessments, not Enneagram specifically, but personality is a topic that I especially like and have uh, quite a bit of knowledge on and the Enneagram is a assessment that I don't have any um, real training in it but I have read quite a bit about it about maybe like 10 years ago I read a whole bunch of books about the Enneagram um, but it's never been my favorite 
personality assessment. I do think that it's interesting, but I don't necessarily find it the most useful. Anyway, it has kind of recently like come back into vogue, especially on YouTube. I've seen quite a few booktubers, but also just other kinds of YouTubers talking about the Enneagram um, and especially talking about this book and how amazing it is. So I wanted to read this one to kind of see what is the new exciting Enneagram book since it's been quite a while since I've read Enneagram books. Anyways, that was a long explanation for why I have this book. Um, overall, I did think that this book was well done. I don't feel like it gave me a lot of um, new information, although as I said, I've read quite a lot about the Enneagram already, um, and I have read some books that are much denser, um, more detailed like reference books about the Enneagram, so I probably shouldn't have gone into this book expecting it to give me like a lot of new information. Um, I do think that this book could be a really good introduction for people into the Enneagram. It's very readable. Um, they use lots of stories and examples to illustrate the different types. So I do think that it's very accessible. One thing though that I kind of was not prepared for, which is not necessarily the fault of the book though, is how religious it is. Um, most of the book is relatively like secular and anybody could find useful. There is one part um, of each chapter at the end where they're kind of talking about uh, personal development, kind of now that you know which, if you are this type, like how do you grow and develop as a person. Um, however, most of the advice had to do with like accepting Jesus into your heart or accepting that Jesus loves you and things like that, which I'm not saying that that is a bad thing, but that was just something I was not prepared for. I didn't really realize that it was going to get religious in that way at all, um, especially every time I have heard people uh, review or reference or recommend this book, no one's ever mentioned that. Um, and so that was something that I just like wasn't really prepared for and then also I would kind of end up just skipping that section because I was like it's just not really relevant to me. Um, but if that's something that is relevant to you or resonates with you then of course it would be that much more helpful. Um, but then if you are either like not Christian or not religious at all, that's just a section that either you may want to skip over or it just takes an extra layer of interpretation as how those uh, lessons may apply to you. But overall I do think that this book is a really good introduction. It gives a lot of information about the Enneagram in a short period of time and it's very accessible and readable. So that is all for my February wrap-up. Please let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books because I would love to chat with you. Thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!